beautiful Caroline. I'm the most blessed man on earth to have your heart become one with mine today. I have prayed for you throughout my life to know love, to be strong, to be safe, and to have faith in our Father in heaven. I am blessed to have you to be my best friend. Our lives together and predestined to unite our honored heritage together. I see these vows not as promises, but as privileges. I get to laugh with you and cry with you, care for you and share with you. I get to run with you and walk with you, build with you and live with you. different format for this video if you've been watching me for a while. That was a recent wedding video that I just finished and I shot it all on the Panasonic S1H and in my opinion it just turned out real good. So let's talk about wedding videos. The reason that I want to cover this topic is because I have a feeling that next year, 2021, is going to be a very good year for wedding videographers. And you probably know just because of everything that went on this year, you've got couples that have rescheduled to next year or even couples that were looking into getting married this year but decided to hold off on their wedding because of just everything that's happened this year. So I'm just trying to be ahead of the game for those who want to get into wedding filmmaking and can come into 2021 just ready to make some awesome videos. And so we're going to be covering 10 essential tips to make your wedding videos more immersive and cinematic. And this will be a really good video if you're just starting out and trying to get into wedding filmmaking or maybe you're already doing that and you're just trying to figure out like what can I do just to take my videos to the next level. Oh, and these 10 tips, I used all of them in that video you just watched. So let's get started. My name's Dustin, your video tour guide, and please keep your arms and legs inside your chairs at all times. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Tip number one is to get as much variety as possible. What I mean when I say variety, I mean wide shots, medium shots, close-up shots, and even ultra close-up shots. This will help with the immersive aspect of the video. For my wide shots, I like to be between like 14 to 24 millimeter focal length because it makes for a really nice establishing shot and just reveals all the details in the scene. What can really make it look even more cinematic, which I didn't do in this video, is to get a drone shot. I realized though not everybody owns one of these and I wanted to show you, you don't have to own one in order to get the establishing shots. For medium shots, I like to be around 35 to 50 millimeters and typically medium shots will cut off around someone's thighs or waist. Medium shots just give more focus to the subject subject or even multiple subjects in the shot, so this is why it's important to get these. What's even more important though is tight shots. 
tight shots are going to be around 50 millimeters or above. And this is something that's very important about tight shots, and that is to get close to your subject and capture the emotion. You can even do this at different focal lengths. Just be careful with wider focal lengths because you could distort your subject's face. But don't be afraid to get really close to your subjects and capture the emotion. Obviously, there is a time and a place for this. You don't want to be getting up in your subject's face during the ceremony, and you're going to have to use a telephoto lens. But weddings can be emotional days for people, and if you're not getting close enough to see the facial expressions of your subjects, when people watch your video, they're less likely to feel the emotion or as much emotion. I'm fairly certain that 85 millimeters is like the most popular focal length for talking heads in movies as well. And don't quote me on that, but either way, if you watch most movies, notice how close they get during the more emotional scenes for a character. They get nice and tight. The last is ultra close-up shots or macro shots. These are important to capture small details that you want your viewer to focus on and not get distracted by something else in your scene. Some examples are like rings, the bouquet, the bride's dress, the cake, you know, those types of things. You want as much variety as possible at different focal lengths, and you want unique shots that keep your viewer engaged. Take for example the opening shot of the ceiling. This is just a unique perspective that someone walking into the venue might look at at first, and the spinning shot just adds something different to the shot so it pulls whoever is watching in. So just remember for tip number one to change focal lengths often and get as much variety as you can. If you don't have a ton of lenses, for example, this video was 99% shot with a 14 to 24 millimeter, a 35 millimeter, and a 50 millimeter lens. So just change your distance from your subject. Don't be afraid to get really close to your subject as long as you're respectful when it is okay. Also, there is a crop factor on my camera when I shoot in slow motion which you should also consider depending on what camera you're shooting on or what codec you're recording at, but we'll touch on that a little bit later. Tip number two is to get off your gimbal or your glide cam or whatever kind of stabilizer you're using and go handheld. Don't get me wrong, smooth gimbal shots are just, what's the word? Mmm, butter. But this is something even just I recently started doing more often. There's something about just changing things up and adding in some organic handheld shots to your films. And again, this is something that is utilized a lot in Hollywood movies, and there's a purpose to it. For example, in this video, I didn't show the ending, but during the dancing, I was almost strictly shooting handheld. It just feels more exciting to have more handheld shots during the dancing than to have stabilized shots. And when I was in the room with the bride, you may have noticed as well that I was handheld for some of those shots. I just wanted to have more control on what my camera was doing and also wanted to do some things which I will go over a bit later. I know it sounds kind of crazy too, but there are techniques to shoot nice looking handheld shots, which even I'm still learning, but the best way to get better at it is to either practice or watch some videos or even movies that have handheld shots in it. That'll help you if you go handheld and don't really know what to do. And I put this tip as number two because I think it's something we should all do more often, not even just in wedding videos, but in other other videos as well. If you get good at mixing gimbal shots with handheld shots, I believe it'll help your video stand out just that much more. Tip number three has to do with why I sometimes go handheld in the first place, and that is to use manual focus. Now, I'm always shooting in manual focus because this video was shot on the Panasonic S1H, and well, autofocus isn't really an option for me, but even when I was shooting weddings on my Sony a7 III, I would often flip it into manual in order to get a certain look in a shot. For example, this slow revealing shot of the groom where everything is very blurry and out of focus and I rack to him into focus. I do this a few other times, like in the bride's room when she's getting ready and after the bride and groom are married and it was this epic sequence of them walking around looking pretty and happy. I also did a few other things like setting my focus to a certain distance and bringing my subject into focus. So what I'm saying is just get creative. I know how convenient autofocus is, but focus is another storytelling element to video. I refer back to Hollywood movies a lot, but every single movie out there probably was shot in manual focus. I refer to it a lot because, well, that's kind of the goal here. We're trying to make these wedding videos look like movies, and so what's the best way to do that? do what they do in the movies. If you're struggling with manual focus, I made a video on 15 tips and tools you can do to get better at manual focus, but the best way to get better is to practice. Tip number four is to add depth to your shots when possible. What I'm talking about is having foreground, midground, and background. This isn't always going to be possible, but when it is, it can really add some unique angles and help whoever is watching focus on something specific in the shot. Even on this tight shot of the bride, I put her mom's shoulder in the foreground. 
This helps it feel more immersive, almost like you're in the room watching over the mom's shoulder. Or even during the ceremony where I put the flowers in the foreground, the bride in the midground, and the audience blurry in the background. It can also help you get more dynamic looking shots if you're constantly thinking, what can I put in the foreground? Get creative, get low to the ground, like use people, get behind decoration. There's endless opportunities for what you can put in your foreground. You just have to get creative and figure out where those shots are. Tip number five is something you can either do in post or you can do it in camera. And that is not to use slow motion the entire video. Now, slow-mo has its place in wedding films. It makes things look super elegant, smooth, and just pretty, but it is very overused in wedding films. Even I'm guilty of this and I'm starting to change it. One thing I really like about the Panasonic S1H is they have an option to film at 48 FPS. And there's two reasons that I love this. The first is sometimes 60 FPS is just a little too slow. 48 FPS is just the right balance of slowing things down without it being too slow for those slower moving shots. One little tip too, I suggest you never film a wedding at 120 FPS. It may kind of seem like slower is better, but there's just not enough fast action for it to make sense to film that slow the whole time, in my opinion. The only time I'd say switch to 120 is if there's going to be some fast action, like for example, the bride getting spun around in her big pretty dress, or like when they threw the groom into the air. I didn't film that in 120, but I'm just using it as an example. And it's the same thing with manual focus. It's just a tool and it's up to you to determine when it's best to be used. The second thing is when I speed up things in post to real time, it'll cut out the right frames in order for the footage to look cleaner. Now I could go into detail details about this, but if you shoot at 60 FPS and play the clip at real time, it's going to cut out 36 of those frames. And on a 24 FPS timeline, you can't cut out that amount of frames evenly. Now this isn't a huge deal, but if you're picky, you'll notice it can kind of make your footage look a little jittery, if that makes sense. That may not be the right word, but again, it's, it's not super noticeable. You'll notice I changed a lot in this film from real time to slow-mo. The biggest reason for this is so I don't have to drag the clip out in order to show what I wanted to in that amount of time. And it just changes the pacing on the video to keep things just more engaging. Tip number six is to add voice into your film. Adding a voice, even better if you can add the bride and groom's voice, really helps establish an immediate connection while you're watching. For this video, I didn't add the bride's voice mostly because the audio wasn't as clean, but she was pretty emotional as well, so it just wouldn't have been as clean having her voice in there. And you can also add the officiant's voice in there, which I have done on a lot of my other wedding videos. But for this one, I really wanted to add the bride or groom's voice in there. Now this can be a lot more work and can cost you some money because you're gonna have to mic everybody who is speaking and have the gear to even do that or plug into the house system and record the audio, but I promise it'll take your videos to the next level and really help them stand out. Now it's up to you to decide if you wanna charge more for this or just include it because it is more work and will take more time. But if you don't include the setup time on the wedding day or cost of the gear, it typically only takes me about maybe 30, 45 minutes longer to add in the voice, which isn't a ton of time. And the more often you do this, it'll be easier for you to find what audio clips you wanna add in there. Another option is to have your bride and groom come to your house or studio, whatever you have, and record their vows separate. This can just ensure that you get super clean audio. I may even suggest that you have them come before the wedding and make sure that they don't hear each other like while you're recording but a lot of the times after the wedding, your couples will kind of go off the map and you want to give your bride and groom their space. Again, this can take more time, but if you want to make your videos more cinematic and immersive, this is a super good way to do that. Tip number seven is to use a more cinematic track. This is one of those things that can be the most tedious part of making videos, and that's choosing the right music. If you've seen some of my wedding videos, you'll know that cinematic tracks are kind of my favorite thing but I sometimes can take hours to find a song. I really take my time and try and fit the mood of the wedding and scene because music is just super important. It can be the difference of an okay wedding video and a fantastic wedding video. Funny story about this song I chose as well, I actually was worried it was going to be too much, but as soon as I started cutting it together with the song, I knew it was the right choice. I have also started editing a video to music and that I've spent 45 minutes trying to find the right song, but decide things just aren't working and start over. This isn't always the case too. Like sometimes I'll find a song within five minutes. Like this couple's first look video, I think I found in like 10 minutes, which I think I'll show part of it at the end of this video. But yeah, maybe you're doing all of those tips I just mentioned. And the one thing you need is just to make it more cinematic, 
by adding a more cinematic track. You probably won't be able to do this all the time either. Like some couples take the music for their video very seriously and they wanna choose their music. My advice for this is to explain to them why they should let you choose the music. For one, copyright. Yes, you should be getting licenses for every song you use. If they wanna use mainstream music that you can't get a license for or would just be super expensive to do so, let them know you can do it. They just can't post the video online anywhere. I've had one couple that was okay with this, but what usually convinces them to let me choose is I tell them how every wedding video is different and they have a lot to worry about with the wedding. And if they let me choose, I can match the vibe of the footage better and it's one less thing they have to worry about. If it's important to them to choose, I will give them the website of the stock music site I have a subscription to at the time and tell them, let me know once they find one that they like. Typically, once they see how long it takes, they let me choose. Or you can tell them, send me a song you like and I will try and find some options that have a similar feel or vibe and send them a few songs to choose from. I'm going to save stock music sites for another video, but if you're curious of some of my favorites, I like Soundstripe and Musicbed the best, and Soundstripe is a much more affordable option than Musicbed, so keep that in mind. Tip number eight is to change your aspect ratio. This is another thing they do in Hollywood is they choose a wide aspect ratio. I don't know what it is either that makes it more cinematic, but there's just something about it that does. This video you're watching on YouTube is how I film all my videos now, which is DCI 4K. The difference between DCI 4K and just 4K or Ultra HD is super small, but it makes your aspect ratio just slightly wider at 4096 by 2160 instead of 3840 by 2160, which again is small, but it makes a difference in how the video feels while you're watching. You can play with a bunch of different aspect ratios like 2.35 by one, which is a popular movie format, which can help things just look and feel more cinematic. I used to do this on all of my wedding videos when I shot on my Sony a7 III, but ever since I upgraded to the Panasonic S1H, I just leave it at cinema 4K because it's just enough to make it feel a little bit more cinematic. Tip number nine is to pick up the pacing with your cuts depending on what is happening in the scene. So once they got married and things were exciting, I started making a lot more cuts and doing them fairly quickly. This is also because the music picked up as well, so keep that in mind when you're choosing a track. And I also wanna mention to try not to cut exactly to the music the entire video. Cutting to the music helps with the pacing in videos, but it can sometimes get very predictable and almost just kind of boring if you know when a cut is coming. So change things up. Hold on a shot longer, then do some quicker cuts, then hold, then cut for a while. Just change things up and keep them interesting. I do this as well at the end of the wedding video during the dancing because it just feels right to pick up the pacing and can keep the audience more engaged during those parts. And finally, tip number 10 is to keep things clean and simple. I mean this as a whole too. Keep the edit clean, keep the color grade clean, and don't add a bunch of trendy transitions. I realize that some couples may request for this. For example, I've made a wedding video kind of in the style of Sam Colder. I didn't go crazy with the orange and teal grade, but the clean mass transition and speed ramps, I did. It was super fun and I think it turned out super awesome, but typically keeping things clean and timeless is the way to go. The biggest reason that I like to do this now is because I don't want my couples looking back on their wedding videos in 20 years and say, hey, remember when that trendy video was a thing? Yeah, I remember that. As much as you may think this video is for you, it's for your couple. I doubt they're going to come find you in 20 years and demand a refund. It's just something I think couples don't really think about and maybe that's what they want, but you can never go wrong with clean and minimal because more than likely it'll be timeless. The color grade is probably the place you can be the most creative, but remember just not to overdo it. Color can be a super important thing in movies and we could talk about, you know, color theory and all that and they can convey like different moods or emphasize some kind of overall message but you can be creative and clean with the grade as well. One of my favorite tools I just recently discovered is Cinema Grade, which I'll talk about more in another video. But if you wanna check it out, I have a link to it in the description. That's everything. I promise that if you combine all these tips, it's going to help make your wedding videos stand out and feel more immersive and cinematic. A lot of this stuff also transfers over to making other types of videos as well. So these tips will make you just that much more versatile as a filmmaker if you wanna branch out into other types of videos. Remember though, that you're going to have to practice in order to get better at these tips. And if you're still struggling, find some wedding filmmakers or even just movies you love and draw inspiration from there. Experiment and have fun with your cameras and create something epic. I guess though if you're watching this in like five years and this video has millions of views then everybody's going to be making their videos this way. So it might be cliche to actually make your wedding video like this but if it is cliche then film a wedding video in VR. 
Yeah, I'm already ahead of the game. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a triple thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel, consider checking out some of the affiliate links in the description, or you can also just hit the subscribe button and the bell button to be notified of future uploads. Don't forget too, for those who are still watching, I'm doing a giveaway for reaching a thousand subscribers, which you can find more info at the bottom of the description. But in the meantime though, happy filming. Thank you.